when you mentioned hip hop, you mentioned hip hop heritage, you mentioned the pioneers, you mentioned the pillars, you mentioned the ones that receive awards for the Rap Hall of Fame, Rolling Stone's most influential people. You mentioned having his own name on the Bronx Walk of Fame next to the legendary Colin Powell. You mentioned somebody who's been a United Nations honorary ambassador to music. You mentioned my friend, my brother, my mentor. You got to say his name is synonymous with hip-hop royalty. The one and only DJ Red Alert is on the line with us right Let's now. Let's get it. Hey. Yes, Red sir. Alert. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hey. Every day, Sway. Every day, Sway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what up, Brad? Okay, How you doing? What's, what's going on, everybody? What's Good up, day? Brad? Good morning. Good morning. Happy to hear you. Hey, Brad, we got Heather okay. B. Of course, the legend Heather B. and Tracy G. Uh, online with us. Heather, I missed you last time I came. I know, I man. Red, it, it be crazy, man. Every time I see Red, I just give him a hug. And if look, if I'm by a bar, I just want to buy a drink, Red. I'm just saying, just always out of love and respect for you. Always, just as everything Thank Sway you. said, on top. But on top of that, just you have been a supporter. Like that's the one thing when I when I hear your name, I think about like the support that you have for artists that you truly respected or artists that you were fond of. You played their music. You supported us. You never know no no shady business, nothing like that. You just always showed love. So when I see Uncle Red out, come on, Sway, you got to give him a hug and just see if he's straight. Like what you need, Red? I'm going to help out. Much love to you. Much love. Thank you. Thank you. Red, if you need some uh-huh. food, anything, I got you, man. I got you for lunch, man. <laughs> Red. <laughs> okay. Hey, Red. You, you, you know what? Uh, Red Alert uh, texted me the other day, because, uh, and I want to talk about this, too, because you just launched a new platform, um, and you got a lot of merchandise that is really cool. Like, And I, and I went on a platform, and it's called Prop Master Retro, which is um, his signature name, Prop Master and when I went on and looked at all of these uh, shirts and the hoodies um, that you have to offer and the knit caps, and, and I was like, yo, this thing is so dope. You know, have, I'm all, and even the fitted caps, I'm always looking for a reason just to get red alert on the air, just to have fun conversations. That's a and whole so, fact. That's a you whole know, fact. Because I know gems are going to spill out his mouth whether you want to or not. He can't help it. But I love what I'm seeing. Like, I want to tell everybody tuned in right now. Um, Go to this this website and check out all of this uh, gear that he has. It, it says retro, prop master retro, but it's current in the sense that you could wear all of this stuff. It's dope for the day, you know, and you got a lot of designs on here and graphics on here. Tri-State All-Star, Old School Only, you know, Bronx, Hip Hop, you know, The Birthplace. You know, it's all of these different messagings that you have on these on this merchandise. How, when did you start this, Red? How long has this been up? Well, I'm going to tell you something. I really had this up a while back. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I left from down in Atlanta, I came back up here in New York and got into the swing of what I'm doing. The partner who I was working with, you know, he reached back to me as a last, the late party last year and said, yo, man, I want to bring it back again. I said, okay, well, let's go to the next phase. So we started off doing the winter and started off with the hoodies and the sweats. But, you know, coming into the new year with all the criteria and craziness that we're going through, you know, I like, ah, so I put a little stifle. But now things are blessing, getting a little better. I say, you know what, let me represent. And I say, you know, I want to come across to the people, let them know this is something they can wear proud as far as the culture is concerned. And, and that's, that's, that's the yeah, make people proud as far as the culture is concerned. This is Prop mm-hmm. Masters Retro. It, it, what's the address? Prop Ma- like, how can people go online and find these uh, this merch? This is DJ Red Alert merch at BigCartel.com. Say that again, Red. Okay, I'll say it correctly. DJ Red Alert merch dot BigCartel.com. DJ Red Alert merch dot BigCartel.com. Do y'all got an um, yeah. Instagram too, Red? Yes, um, Prop Master Retro. Prop Master Retro. Uh, yes. Fo- 
following. Yeah, okay, there you go. I'm fo- I'm already I'm following you already, Red. That's what I do. I've been following. You're the only person I follow. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm on it. <laughs> th- three to, through the fire, and then also, man, uh, Red Alert just represents so much of our uh, who we are today. And and you talk about the culture, and when I say culture, like I notice a, and I, you know, everybody has their interpretation of what exactly that means. When we're talking about hip hop culture, um, I, I notice a lot of folks they when they mention hip hop culture they only keep it in the parameters of rap. So they'll tell you who the most popular rapper is uh, or the most popular MC is. But if you ask them to name 10 dope DJs, they won't know their names. Uh, They couldn't name 10. If you ask them to name 10 beat boys, they definitely don't know that or beat girls. Um, How do you, when you say culture, what what, what does that encompass in your mind? What is culture? When, when culture it comes to, means, to me stands for lifestyle, more than just the music, more than just the b-boy, more than just the graffiti, which was taking place before then, and listen to awareness of all what's going on. You know, just to go sidetrack, you know, I was looking at the thing last Sunday on um, TV called To the Beat Y'all, and it was given the history of the go-go scene down in D.C. And when I took time and I was looking at it, I was like amazed because you know, you only knew about the music, but you ain't know about what it took to become what it is. So that's the same thing with hip hop. You know, people are always going to try to strip down what is it that they can go ahead and make it as a big thing and build off of it. But, you know, you, you got to take everything all in consideration, not just one thing, not just a couple. You got to take it all. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, yeah. um, one thing I always learn. Go to show you that hearing and seeing is a difference from living and being a part of it, and that's what I'm talking about. You gotta learn. You gotta learn what it was just besides what you hear and what uh-huh. you see. There was more to it. There was more to it, and so um, I think for folks like me um, who came up at a certain era, I saw and was a part of that more to it, the struggle, not just the end result of the successful multi platinum artists or, you know, the successful um, millionaire DJ, but the struggle it took, you know, when you got on Kiss F- FM or BLS, you know, it wasn't a whole lot of slots open, you know what I mean, no. for, D- mm-hmm. for DJs no. to play rap music, correct? And, you know, we was like, you know, on the bottom of the barrel because, you know, they said, yeah, I'll just bring that in because they saw the success at BLS to um – Best in Peace, Super Rock, and Mr. Magic. That's when they brought me over there to Kiss FM. And they didn't really take it serious because, you know, at that time when it come to mixing, it was more for like the R&B and dance music. But not knowing that this craze that we had formed from on the outside was starting to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I find that fascinating because I know for us, um, when we got on the radio in 1990 is when King Tech and I got on the radio. Um, there were no, it wasn't any, you can play any rap in any day part in 1990, mm. unless it was after midnight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it had. Right. It, 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 when you said that, because when they started me doing on Kiss FM, I was on from 11 to 2 in the morning. Similar. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what I think happened, Red, is a lot of people around the country took cue from what was happening in New York, you know, and on New York radio stations like KISS. And if a Red Alert was on at 11 to 2, then they just kind of um, mimicked uh, what they saw already put in the blueprint. And then the other thing is I just think the corporations, I know when we were coming up, Evergreen, which ultimately became Clear Channel and whatever it is now, um, they didn't know how to program rap into different day parts, morning drive, afternoon drive, you know, midday, the whole nine. When did you start seeing the reins loosen up where you could start hearing rap in New York in like morning drive and middays and, and afternoon drive? Ron, what time was that? I, um, well, I remember that after three years of being on from like 11 to 2, they moved me down 9 to 12, and that's where the time they had me in competition with Mr. Magic over there in BLS. But that was more in you know, a prime time compared to the late night on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. At the same token, the time, the, 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 the music, the sounds of hip-hop was starting to rise more and more towards to, to the commercial. It was creeping in little by little. 
little mm-hmm. by little and start being accepted. And I got to say with the help of videos just as well, respect my man Ralph and Daniels and other video shows after him. You know, not only now they get to hear it, but they get to see it. So now they feel they can gravitate to it more than what they assume. Hey, Brad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I, I want to ask you to this because we had um, Just Ice on the show. Right. Yes. Um, sometime last year and just ice is like a history book, you know, no matter, yes, he is. <laughs> no matter what he, I might've even called you around that time to, uh, just get some insight. And he started telling mm-hmm. po- points of history that I didn't get a chance to live. I was on the West coast. I was a little too young at that time to mm-hmm. get in clubs and stuff like that, man. What was the scene like DJing at the Roxy back in the eighties, man? What, what was what were people rocking to? What did they look like? What was the fashion like? What was the music like? You know, at that time, coming down to the Roxy that came around 81 into 82, I said more 82, it was still like a rebellious time for us in the music scene as far as our culture was concerned because we was also starting to gauge along with other artists from other scenes and like the new wave of hip and, 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 and punk rock ever. So imagine that we rocking along with the early days of, you know, um, Madonna or, or Eurythmics or, um, you know, um, Talking Heads and everything. And mm-hmm. we was coming across a large spectrum of different people walks in life, all nationalities. You know, it doesn't matter where you come from. And we learned to bridge our music along with everybody else's music. So when we played in the Roxy, we played just not hip hop, we played also rock and roll. We play uh um we play um Latin, we play we play Caribbean, we play whatever was in the house, we gave yeah. a little bit of everything too. So that's where how it circulates and I think that helped rise more and more of the culture. Hmm, that's that's interesting. Uh, Red Alert is here, man. Hip hop pioneer. Every time he come on, I like talking to him about the history and walking all the way up to the now because mm-hmm. he was there. <laughs> mm. It's a difference between watching documentaries made by people who weren't there or reading books by people who weren't there. They speaking about a reflection of this man's actual life. You and mm-hmm. I have uh, somebody in common that goes by the name of Barry Mayo, and um. Barry Mayo was like a legendary, iconic radio guy that worked behind the scenes. Uh, Barry mm-hmm. Mayo, Barry Mayo was the um, person that brought you to Kiss initially, correct? Yes. Uh-huh. First, uh, Barry Mayo first approached the band when he saw what was going on in the Roxy, and the first person they went after was our partner in the nation was Africa Islam. But mm-hmm. Islam was always on the go, traveling, doing things. So the next person they went after was my cousin, the original DJ Jazzy J. He mm-hmm. did it for a couple of months, even though there was no pay, but it was starting to be exposure for him. So he let it go because he was moving with Soul Sonic Force on the road. So that's when they came to me, and that was October of 1983. I never looked back. <laughs> Round of applause for Red Alert. Never look back. You heard that, Pizzle? Thanks, man. Barry Mayo, uh, I can't think of what year it was. It might have been 2002, 2003, um, asked me to fill in and do the morning show over at Hot 97, and he was uh, managing that whole cluster over there of uh, mm-hmm. radio stations, and I ended up doing that for nearly a year, and I brought in um, these this unsavory cast of characters, Rich Nice and this dude Jimmy Marr, and we were just having fun doing Morning Drive. It was crazy. Even back then, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Red, I tried to get Heather B to be to come up and co-host with me, and she came one day, and Heather ran out the room after that. Yeah, one man, one. too much for me back then, Red. Oh, come on, Heather! I know you got the tough skin. Come on, <laughs> one day, uh, <laughs> Tracy. I did one shift; it was out four hours. Oh my <laughs> god! She, I could never forget. I never forget the look on Heather's face. <laughs> Heather did the sheet. That was the S-Y-L, huh? See you later. Huh? <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See you later. Uh, hey, Red, can you hang out on the phone with us for a little bit? You know I'm down with you, man. Come on. Okay, I'm going okay. to look crazy. Okay, man. Y'all want to learn this history, um, this what? radio history. It's, this is it, man. This is this is gold right here. Any mm-hmm. questions for DJ Red Alert, 888-742-3345. It's Sway in the Morning on Shade 4 or 5. Yo, Chris, what you doing out of school? Shade 4-5, uh, Sway in the morning. Let's get it, man. 
DJ Red Alert will always be welcome to this show, any show I'm doing. I tell this story, Red. I told it so many times because it means so much. You know, mm-hmm. I always tell it when you come on the show that if it you wasn't for if I, if it wasn't for Red Alert, it was mm-hmm. something Red Alert put in my ear when I was you know a younger guy and really kind of uh, rebellious and kind of slightly radical, and I had it with the system and was ready to quit radio. And Red Alert told me, "You can't quit. We need you there. If you quit, we won't have you there." And simple words made a big impact on me. And he said a few other things that convinced me, you know what, if Red Alert is saying this, and this dude is a juggernaut when it comes to radio, who am mm-hmm. I to turn my back and give up? You know, mm-hmm. and um, that was 21 years ago, and I, and I never looked back. <laughs> uh, respect, yeah, man. Respect, man. And what I did, I was passing you the jewels that was given to me from the people before me in radio when they took a liking to me. You know, they took time talking to me. So why not pass it to you and to many others that can keep this culture and vibe going? Absolutely. Hey, man, that's dope. Yep. Tracy mm-hmm. G, you want to jump in? Yeah, red alert. So good to be speaking with y'all with you. I'm wondering what how when did the term culture vulture come into play and then how do you define it culture vulture came into play when we saw there was other people and they don't have to be honestly as far as nationality is concerned but people that saw there was a way they can profit off it and don't really have the respect for what it is go ahead to you know take advantage of the situation you know I put it put it this way: they rape the situation. Um, to go ahead to utilize, and you know, not even helping along the people that you know created the thing, but you know, use whatever they have perfected, and don't look back. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Or, or Do we even- know who who created the term, or like what around what year it was first used? Well, you know, it was a lot of my peers, and that was like maybe around, maybe uh, I could exaggerate somewhere in the 90s era, but I know a lot of my peers have started stating that who officially started, I have no idea. But a lot of my peers, I, I came up with the same time in the culture. I know they the one that start, you know, speaking that. Culture mm-hmm. vulture. Uh, it's been around for a minute. Trey, you got, a, you got a question for Red Alert? Trey in Virginia Beach. What up, Trey? What up, Trey? Hey, Trey. Yo, what's happening? What's happening, Sway? What's happening, Heather? Tracy? What's up, family? Yo. Yo, yo chilling. Yo, man, I'm, I swear, I'm, I'm, I'm almost in fucking tears, man. Red Alert, <laughs> you don't understand, boy. I love you, man. I've been, I'm, I'm, Next, I'm man. 53 years, <laughs> I'm 53 years old, bro. I've been rocking mixtapes. I used to, I, I lived up in Rochester, and we used to have to hook the cable up to get you, uh, uh, DLS, you, you used to have to hook the cable up, man, to, to just get the mm. radio station, just for us to listen at the library, out the library at night, drinking 40s and shit. Man, <laughs> thank you. Okay. okay. No shit. Okay. Thank you, man. Thank you, and, and, and I'm going to let y'all go, but, but Sway, you said it best, man. I appreciate what you and Heather and Tracy and all y'all do, but uh, Red, you got to stick around, man. You got to stay around, man, because we got to keep this shit live and popping, baby. This is hip hop, baby. I love it. Thank I love you. y'all. I love hip hop, baby. Man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank right. you. You know, I appreciate that. You, you know, can I put a little tap on that, on Sway? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, a lot of people did not understand before it came to commercial radio, such as like a BLS and Kiss FM. But when it took around Mr. Magic that started taking upon his to play rap music on an independent station in New York City, as far back, I said 81. You know, probably maybe earlier than that at an independent station where you had to pay for airtime to get on the radio. And when he was playing... He was playing selection of some maybe R&B, some disco at that time, but he also was going more and more towards the hip-hop, the sounds of hip-hop, you know, what they call rap music today. And when it, he started becoming more popular in the streets, it became so back, so um, so powerful that it got back to Frankie Crockett BLS 
mm-hmm. that say, yo, who is this guy? Yo, I must go ahead and pull him in because he saw how much of a following he had. So it had to mm-hmm. start from somewhere. Mm-hmm. There it is, Trey. You got them gems. You a citizen, Trey. You no already question. know. You, you, the morning. You, you mentioned Frankie Crocker, and um, we had Deanna Williams, who did the news and, and reports for Frankie Crocker, and he brought her in as well. Um, you remember her, Red? Of course, very much. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, and she was talking about that time and era and who Frankie Crocker was. She said he was an adamant professional. She learned the best. She learned the most from him. What was it like being around Frankie Crocker? You know, I got to learn more about Frankie with him much later on because he was at BLS where I was at KISS, and -hmm. I knew he had left for a minute, but when he came back to the second wave, and, you know, we was coming across PAP a couple times, you know, we got to speak. Even though he looked at me as a competitive corner at the other station, he he would still take time to talk. You know, mm-hmm. and his presence alone show you that how dominant a figure he was. You know, and when you hear the stories, and then when you see it for yourself, the person yourself, and how he come to you, his demeanor and everything, you be like, yo, this guy can really not just show you. He give guide you a little bit of everything, and that mm-hmm. was Frankie. That was difficult to do, being. Um you know, especially in that time and era to become a, a prominent force in any corporation, I would think, in entertainment, especially as a black person, um, you know, just to have that autonomy and be in control over your own show, the people you hire to make that impact, have that connection with the community at the same time. What kind of like what kind of barriers or blockers did y'all face um, in radio at that time? Or was it a little more liberal minded when it came to people of color? Well, you know, you got to understand, because we was quote, unquote, quote, as urban stations. You yeah. know, I know at one point in time, it was never looking much of a color thing, even though it was in the past, but it, it kind of watered down a little bit because when you start saying that all different nationalities listen to a variation of different sounds, if I could listen to Recipes Chuck Leonard on AM station WABC, which I found out later on that he was a brother, but the way he came across on the radio, he sounded like, you know, a, 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 somebody else. Um, <laughs> and then I started working with him in church. When I started um, seeing upon other people, you know, as far as they were Caucasians, like my man Charlie Berger and rest in peace, Mary Thomas, they was working on kids, but it was an urban station. So it was showing that, you know, it didn't matter about the racial standpoint. It showed about how we can work together to present the sounds to the to the people. And that's yeah. where I have learned. And, you know, like I said, from before then, when I learned playing with Bam down at the Roxy, you know, we were playing a little bit of everything. For what they call open format today, we were doing that back in the 80s. So, you know, mm-hmm. you always learn how to be open-minded to within people as well as the vibe, the culture, the sound. DJ Red Alert, and we're talking about um, his clothing line that you could find right now. If you go to Instagram, um, I'll follow him right now. You could follow him at Prop Master Retro. That's Prop Master Retro, and you can see a lot mm-hmm. of these ill-ass merch, hoodies, uh, fitted caps, knit caps, T-shirts, the whole nine. Or you could go to the website. Red, give out that website again. It's DJ Red Alert Merch dot BigCartel.com. There it is, man. We got uh, Lewis in Miami. You want to say what Lewis. up to Red Alert? Hey, Lewis. Yes, yes, yes. Respect, respect, respect. Sway, Tracy G, Heather B. Respect. What up? I love your show. I listen to it all the time. But DJ Red Alert, I must say, I remember being 10 years old listening to your radio station. I couldn't listen to it at 11 o'clock. We were young, but we recorded on a pause button tape. And we would record the radio station show at night, and then the next day, Saturday morning, we would listen to it, So we would take out all the commercials, so we had them double decks. And we would take that tape, and I moved to Florida with that tape. I used to sell your, your, your show for like five bucks to like spread hip-hop in Miami. You know, it was crazy that we could actually sell your radio show, but that was how I got introduced to hip-hop. And from there, I went and learned everything about hip-hop. I learned how to DJ. I still DJ now. I started breakdancing. Mm. I started doing graffiti. I did all the elements, including knowledge itself, which I still have to, to this day. So, like, hip-hop is like a force. It's like a super weapon that we have 
as black people that we should use, you know, because we created out of thin air. And it's still going on right now. And as we all know right now, it is being taken away from us little by little. But we got to teach the whole history of it. And I'm glad that's why it has red alert on here because this is the, one, of the, one of the main elements of hip-hop is the DJ. And without the DJ, we wouldn't have the MC because the MC was talking about the DJ the whole time. But now the DJ don't have no love. You know what I'm saying? So red alert, your story has to be told like a documentary or something like that, you know, because it's very important that people know that this is the reason that we listen to hip-hop right now is because of you. Mm. Peace. Respect, man. Now, I thank you, man. Number one. Respect to you for making a little bit of profit off of me and also for keeping, <laughs> up, keeping it alive, you know. And I'm not mad about what I just said the first one. I'm going to tell you why. Because I remember when people were used, when I was doing the radio, people used to always come back to me and say, yo, man, I'm making money off of it. How are you making money? I say, well, you know, I take you off the radio. Either I go away to school, I go into service, or I go on somewhere in, in the out of town, and I'm making copies, not knowing at the same time they were helping promoting me. So when they mm, were promoting me, I was able to get bookings out of town. Mm, and I was selling a hi-fi. I would buy expensive tapes, you know, the hi-fi metallic tapes that, you know, we used to use for the studios uh, to sell or the, the quality. So it wasn't like a cheap it. product. <laughs> yeah, good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you can't put Red Alert on a cheap tape, dog. It, uh, you exactly. know, he, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Louis, you a citizen, bro. That's Thank way you in the morning. Thank you so much, yo. Swear Absolutely. My name is Louis. Respect. L-O-U-I-E. S-P-R-E-E. Follow me, people, please. You know what I'm saying? Louis Spree, my man. Brother. Thank you, brother. Hey, Red, let me ask you this. Um, mm-hmm. you, you talk about, you know, you was able to get bookings out of town, and, you know, a lot of us started radio. We work for free. I know even when Tech and I started, it took a year before we even got our first paycheck. Um, and that was common. It wasn't, we didn't think nothing of it. I mean, we'd have loved to get paid, but it was just the way things were, you know. And now you mm-hmm. look at hip hop, and then even with the rappers back then, the deals. Not many people were making a lot of money off of deals back then. Uh, you know, the deal structure wasn't rapper; it wasn't artist friendly. You know, and that where that vultures, that vulture phrase you brought up, Tracy. We saw that exist in the record companies and the publications mm-hmm. and all of these different yes. entities that made money off of the culture and didn't give mm-hmm. back properly. Since then, you know, people learn from the mistakes that were made or the mishaps that were made, let's say when um, a Grandmaster cast was um, publishing rights were stolen and licensing rights were stolen uh, for, uh, for, for songs like Rapper's Delight and, you know, yeah, people were yeah. t- taking control over the people's publishing. Now you see billionaires like Diddy, like Jay-Z um, and others that are starting to go, Kanye, Dr. Dre, you know, these guys have valued themselves over a billion dollars what what did you ever think you'll see that day and when you you were there when jay-z first started when you look at how far he's come from the early days of jazz oh and you know and and, and doing reasonable doubt and starting rockefeller records to becoming this business what what are your thoughts man what do, what do you what do you what do you notice i had i had noticed that and and I really felt that it was going to happen. I'm going to tell you why. Because when I look at the blueprint and other different fields of music, such as R&B, jazz, you know, for what we perfected, what we came out and presented, you saw that there were some people that start taking upon their own and start running their own business, their own establishment. You know, I mean, rest in peace to James Brown. He took control of his destiny and what is it that he wanted to do. You saw, I'm just using him as an example, you know, which is many others, you know, as far as the, um, the different genres of music I just mentioned. They either go, go ahead and ride with the wave for what they see is bringing to them, or they go and step up and learn to um, master it and take control and run with it. Mm-hmm. That's what you see with the people you just mentioned, Diddy and, and Jay and everything. I look at it this way. I'm blessed to say I remember the first time I ever got a gig when I started DJing, $50. Mm-hmm. But you know what I saw? I saw myself starting to become a businessman because I'm receiving what I'm doing. So mm-hmm. now you learn to grow with that. I was taking mm-hmm. myself, taking time myself. I was taking tapes before I got on radio. I was taking them and selling them around. I became a businessman. So that's the same thing where, you know, you see people start taking it to other heights later on down the road. It's all mm-hmm. about putting your mind along with the, with the creation you do. 
you create the sounds, you create the whole point, but you got to learn to become business upon what you create. DJ Red Alert, HB. Uh, I was talking to a uh, uh, horse, um, HB, my brother, HB's Heather's husband, obviously, uh, yesterday. That's my man. Yeah, you know everybody know Big Horse, man. Big Horse need his own documentary. I promise you. <laughs> no, I swear, man. I, I call him for the for the fill in the voids. Like that man's knowledge runs so deep. He's like a Bible uh, when it comes to this culture. Um, and we just talked about MC2 going over our, our top fives, and and he, you know, he was telling me how he rearranged his list, you know, and we start having this whole full conversation on KRS One. And, mm. you know, and where he stands in the, in, the, in the history of time as an MC, And it's interesting because you see in 2015 or 2020, you see these lists go up and these people talk about MCs, but they don't, you know, it's, it's like don't, they don't have, you know, it's like it's degrees to knowledge when it, when it comes to this culture. It's like how much you want to know, you know, how much digging you want to do, how much compare and contrast you want to do. Some of the people on the list don't even have um, on these lists don't even have the skill set that a KRS one has, but it's hard to explain unless you know, uh, and you got to put it in context of time. Where do you see him? I know we don't do like number one, two, three, or four, but where do you see him in your in your book of MCs, KRS one? Oh history? man, yeah, he's one of the greats. I mean, not because I had worked with the man, you no. Know, but by working with him, I experienced and see what is it he can bring to the table. Even when I left from him, I still continue to see what he brought to the table. And, you know, come on, he, he, he learned to master his craft. At the same token of time, he learned how to continue to stay among his audience. Now, he may not be on a commercial field that you may hear on the radio, but look at the big following he got. You know, when I think about him, I think about Dougie, I think about various artists. You don't even have, you haven't probably heard no music on the radio in a while or anything up to date they're doing. But when they go ahead and do a concert, everybody come out to see them. They learn how to brand themselves. They learn how to market and promote themselves. They learn how to be uh, in, in tune with the audience to keep their self standard. Mind you, at the same time, at the time, they still practice their skills and keep it sharp. So it's mm-hmm. a balance. That's why they call it the music business. Mm-hmm. Who who are some of those MCs like in the past, let's say 10 years, from the J. Coles to the Kendricks, the Big Shines, the Kanye's, the, the Nicki Minaj's, you know, uh, the Rhapsodies. Just in your own personal uh, liking, who are some MCs that came out in the last 10 or 15 years that, that you took note to that you thought were good? Well, you know, I'm going to tell you, honestly, you, you just mentioned – some of my favorites of the past 10 years. I'm not saying that as a scapegoat, it's the truth, but you know, mm-hmm. their names stand out. But there also, there's a few artists that may not have commercial level. And I can't think off the top. There's a guy who I play now named Innocent, um, mm-hmm. who I always mm-hmm. love. Rest in peace, my man, Fred, the godson. Um, oh. Oh. Um, it, it's quite a few of them, and it don't have to be based on where you live. You no, know, I tried to listen to a little. There's a there's a young lady that's down there in Tampa, Florida, named Dynasty. He bad. Mm-hmm. Um, it's quite a few people in different places around the world that I get emails still to this day. People sending me music, and I take time to listen because Man. you never know who is it you go come across that becomes successful. So it doesn't hurt to listen. It doesn't hurt to listen, man. I'm going to play one more song, Ray. You going to hang out with us? I'm down. I'm here. And here we go, hey. man. I got him. I got him hooked, HB. Tracy, I, I got him. Sway in the morning. <laughs> Shade 4 5. Take him back. Back into time. Let's go. Sway in the morning. Shade 4 5. Yo, I'm ready to go march. <laughs> Yo, Red Alert is on the line with us right now. Go to Wasn't Prop Red Master. there when they did that live? At, at, you, they was there. Like, they that was live. I mean, you saw the video. Ooh. Red, if you go back and look at that video of the bridge is over, Red Alert is DJing. Like, it's crazy. I mean, that's so classic <laughs> in terms of battle records. And I can't even imagine what it must have been like, Red, to be there live when that went down. And, you know, I'm going to tell you the blessing was, 
it showed that how respectful we were amongst each other because we kept everything on record. We kept everything on the microphone. We never escalated to any other spectrum. And that's why there's a lot of respect amongst each other to this day as far as artists and DJs are concerned. You know, what's going on? I mean, I'm, I'm saddened for certain things that's going on amongst certain artists and groups. But for us, we didn't think that. We were just about bringing our skill level. You know, I'm, we looking upon like when, Bat, when Bird and Magic was on the court, but still can go to each other home and sit down and eat. Ah, I get it. I get it. That that night at, at Union Square, man, can you paint the picture? Like, what was it like in the crowd? What was the energy? What was the buildup like? Oh, man, Union Square was nuts. Oh, man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> man, listen. Respect to my original crew that was with me down there, the Violators. When we was down there, like, you know, the energy was all different parts of the, of the city, you know, Brooklyn, Queens. Manhattan, you know, Bronx and everything, and when I played, but when we did that record for the video, yo, everybody was in an uproar, you know, and it didn't take long for that record to build up to the audience. Everybody, it was like instant gravitation, you know, every instant response to how they felt for that record, and we, we just fed off, we fed off each other. They fed off for us, we fed off for them, as far as the energy is concerned, to keep it going. Hey, did y'all do rehearsals prior to that? Like, did y'all no. rehearse? What? No. no. Not one time ever in my life as being with Chaos One as well as my girl Sparky D, I ever had to practice. We just always went according. We always tell each other out for what is it the next thing to do while we on stage or whatever it is besides that. It's like, you know, it's like playing basketball. You know, you know how to accommodate and play and bounce off each other. That's what we did as far as, you know, us on stage. Wow, man. Um, Red Alert is here, man. We got Kevin from South Carolina. I want to say something real quick. Go ahead, Kev. What's going on? Hey, Kev. Sway, what's going on here to be Tracy G? What's up? What up, bro? Man, red, red Alert, man. I, I just want to give you your flowers while you're here, bro, man. You you, you, you awesome. You the, you the fucking man, man. You just, man, you, 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 you history all by itself. That's all I got to say, man. You just a history. I, I, I love hearing from you. God bless. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, man. You know, and I'm going to tell you something, Sway. It's, 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 it's a blessing to be you know, loved by people who you touch according to what you do. You know, mm -hmm. they feel mm -hmm. your energy according to what you do. You know, and, and you know, you can't ask enough for those men. To me, that's priceless. Yes, it is, man. Hey, Kev, mm -hmm. you know what? And then, Red, tell Kev your website because Red got some really dope merchandise uh, that he's bringing to the public, man. Tell him how he can find it, Red. Hey, man, check this out, man. I got a line called Prop Master Retro, and, you know, I have a display of all different features that consist of the culture, the hip-hop culture. You can go online and check it out. It, the, the address is DJ Red Alert Merch. Oh, I'm about to do that now tell. and purchase. I'm about to do that now and purchase yeah. on everything. Okay. okay, hey, blessing, man. I thank you, man. You know, listen here. It's DJ. like we got to keep, in order to keep the culture going, we got to learn how to support each other. Mm -hmm. per se. That's the way I'm looking at it. Okay, exactly. so DJ Kev, DJ Red Alert merch at Big Cartel. How you spell cartel? C A R T E L, Red? Yes, uh huh. Okay, big cartel. All right. Okay. All right, got it. All right, my man. Uh DJ Hennessy been holding on for a minute. What you want to say? He in Denver, Red. Go ahead, DJ the Hennessy. Honey. Oh. <laughs> hey, I just wanna get uh DJ Red Alert. I love you, bro. Um uh, Respect. I I I I used to listen to you in uh in New York, you know, uh, every time I visit back east, I know you should do do the um the twelve o'clock show. Okay. Uh -huh. I got, that's the old and school I remember, room. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I remember you you uh, you, I, I, you played uh Gotta Take It Easy one time and you, you cut it up so good I had to pull over on ninety five and go find me a a, a, a mixtape shop. To get that joint, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know I hear you, man. That's back in the days. It wasn't CDs; it was mixtapes. You know, mm -hmm. and my cousin, right, my right. cousin, they, 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 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Hey, Hennessy, you a citizen, man. Sway the morning. Citizen. We're going to go to Johnny O in Cleveland. DJ Johnny, Johnny o. o. You wanna, what up, man? Hey. What's up? What's up, Red? Man, that's my man, my dear Johnny O. Respect my man, Johnny O. Yo, he's a he's a legend in his hometown. What up, Johnny O? Hey, What's up, Sway? Mm-hmm. How you doing, brother? How doing you great. Doing? You too, man. I just wanted to call in and, and and reminisce with Red about the tour we did in 1985, uh, the Jerry Fryson tour. Woo! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> you remember? Why you go there, Johnny? <laughs> oh, was that crazy Ooh. red or what? <laughs> I just I want to say also red. I appreciate you. You my OG, and you got nothing but love for you. I will be supporting your your merch shop today. And hope you got Thank some three X shit in there because I'm big. You know that, right? <laughs> big dude. <laughs> hey, he hey, big dude, big red. Thing, Johnny. As long as she love you, everything is okay. That's all that matters, right? <laughs> yeah, Sixteen I, years this year, so we good. So oh, I just want to say that up, and I appreciate y'all. Sway, keep y'all keep up the great work, my brother. Thank you, family. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you. Johnny, oh, you know you a citizen, man. A swing in the morning. Thank you, sir. Oh, man. I oh, appreciate man. y'all. Y'all be good. Peace. Absolutely. Yes, Jermaine, sure. been, Jermaine in North Carolina, you've been so patient, man. Go ahead and say what up to Red Alert, bro. What up, Jermaine? Hey, man, Red Alert. Hey, man. Man, God, we, yeah. we, we caught your show in Charlotte at the Sheridan, and, man, it was just like for a cat being down south that could never really get to New York when he was younger to be, like, in a, a club mm-hmm. where you were at performing. And it was just like I was there in New York because it was like it went from different dynamics from music. And it was just like, man, hey, man, you, you helped me check off my bucket list along with one little quick story. KRS performed one time, and his mic wasn't right. So this time I know what you're talking about. KRS is a real performer. He's a real MC. I saw him do this. So, man, hey, I believe everything you say, man. That, that dude is underrated, and, man, he, he needs his props, too. But, Red, you are the man, bro. You made me feel like I was in the club in New York that night, baby, for real. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that, man. You know, it's a blessing to hear these words from everybody, man. I thank you all. I respect everybody that spent time supporting me through the years of what I've been doing. I thank you all. That's what's up, man. Uh, hey, uh, Jermaine, thank you, man. I appreciate you. Make sure you go to his website. You can go to his Instagram at Prop Master Retro. All right, and then the website is uh, DJ Red Alert Merch at BitCartel dot com, right? Okay, dot BitCartel dot com. Yes. Okay, dot dot BitCartel dot com. Okay. Yes, sir. All Thank right, you, y'all go ahead and support uh, or Red Alert. Hey, Red, where you at now? You in the A? Where you at? No, I'm up here in the city. You know. Um, I got to get down there soon and check up on everything, even though I got my people looking out for me down there. You know, one of the violators, he lived down there as well as um, my man, um, Sammy B, the DJ for the Jungle Brothers, and a couple others, you know. So okay. I get down there soon. But I've been up here just maintaining, doing my J-O-B. I still do the radio up here. Okay. that's what. Now, what can people hear you, Red? People can hear me alternate with DJs during the week on WBLS, doing the After Work Mix. Uh, mm-hmm. At 6 p.m. and then I'm on every Saturday at 6 p.m. on WBLS. You know, I've been there since 2012 after they closed down Kiss FM, and that's why I say I got to keep it going, man. It's the level what I do. Hey, man, never look back. You already know what it do. Hey, we had we yeah. had a we had a son G Mims on Bedroom Bars, and um, I saw Red in the background, Heather, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Red was on the on the couch watching TV. I was like, "Yo, Red, what up?" You know, but uh, yo, G Mills mm-hmm. got bars, man. That kid mm-hmm. is talented, and um, so and re- he- re- respect to my younger son, G Mills. You know, and he's a person that what I do, even though I'm daddy, I fall back and I allow him become into his own. I don't want people to accept him because who he is to me. Accept him for what he's known for and what he does. I'm mm-hmm. gonna give him the structure like I'm supposed to. But the rest is on him, and he's been doing it. Respect been, to him. He's been doing it, but it's hard, Red. Like, you know, he's your son, man. Uh, people going to open the door for him regardless, you know, if he's if he, he happy, un- you know. That's understandable, but, you know, it's the same thing like my older son, Rob, that everybody remembers when he was small. Then mm-hmm. it came to a point, everybody said, yo, that's Red's son, that's Red's son. So now here it is, and Rob become of age, and he got older. I walked past, they say, oh, yeah, that's Rob's father. 
So otherwise, he have his own identity. Okay, that's so that's what's up. With Mims. Okay, that's it. Mims the same way, man. Red, I appreciate mm-hmm. you for coming on the show this morning and blessing us with your presence and all these gems. Um, and we'll keep doing this, okay? We'll keep doing and this. I thank, I thank you all, as always, for bringing me on. I thank you all for allowing me to do a presentation of my clothing line, Prop Master Retro. And, you know, respect everybody, man. You no, know? And stuff that's for free. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, man. Love you, Red. Uh, we're going to do some Celebrity Wire up next, but I'm going to take them back real quick. Huh, let me dig in a crate, Heather B. Mm-hmm. Let me dig in a crate. Um, yeah, because, you know, Sway, he DJ on the low, too. He don't want nobody to know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't do yeah, you know. Man, I'm surrounded by King Tech and DJ Revolution. I mean, it's like, Speaking that's like. Man, King Tech and Revolution. A- that absolutely. Everybody loves King Tech, boy. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do this one, okay? Let's take them back. Right. Count black.